Hey everyone, it's Jim from Bells and More, an online vintage tube store. And today in Tube Lab number 132, we're going to talk about how to find the best tube, or at least the best tube for you. But first, caution everyone, electronics and tube amplifiers can have very high voltages present, which can be lethal. Exercise extreme caution when working around them. Always consult a professional technician when in doubt. So, this week we're going to look at something that we, we do all the time. But in talking with one of our really great customers, I realized it may not be universally understood that there is no best tube. What in the heck am I talking about? Well, just hang on for a moment and I'm going to explain. The best tube in your system set up music with your ear brain interface won't necessarily be mine. Okay, everyone gets that. But how in the heck are we going to find our best tube? Well, that's what we're going to do. We're going to walk through the process. We're going to use the most common medium mu or gain twin voltage amplifier out there. Yeah, you guessed it, the 6SN7. So let's have a look at some of my favorites. So the first thing you're going to do when you're starting your quest for the best tube is you're going to do some research. A lot of it's going to be online. Maybe you already have some 6SN7s that you like in your uh, tube library. Is that a good way to call it, your tube library? Your tube inventory. How about that? But online, um, look for people that you can respect. People, you know, I'll, I'll read comments all the time online in which somebody who's new to tubes and they've only ever listened to two 6SN7s. And they declare one of them the best 6SN7 they've ever heard. Well, <laughs> that's not very useful because there's about, you know, like 100, 200, 300 types. So um, you need a, a little bit um, more of a sample to be able to make a declaration like that. So, and one of the reasons I chose the 6SN7 is we specialize in the tube. So we have a lot in stock. I mean, we have thousands. We have hundreds of types. So, unless you're rich and you're patient and you have all the time in the world and you can bring in a hundred different pairs, because you're probably going to need a pair to do some listening tests, narrow it down to what others have recommended and listen to what they say about the tube, because they may well... Uh, identify traits of the tube, sonic traits, that don't appeal to you. Well, knock that off your list. Only look at tubes that re you're really interested in, how, why people are recommending them. So, we're going to start, I'm going to give you a brief description of what these tubes are, and then we're going to talk about the sonics of these tubes. Now, this is sort of my selection of some of my favorite tubes that I would use in the 6SM7, <laughs> I knew I was going to screw that up sooner or later, in the 6SN7 socket. So right at the very beginning, we have one of the most famous ones, the Sylvania 6SN7 GT Bad Boy. And this is actually the MILSPEC, the JAN, Joint Army Navy. CHS was the designator for Sylvania. And you might notice it's got a VT number. What in the heck? VT231. Sometimes they'll just have a VT number on them if they're a mil spec tube from the 1940s. And all that is is the, is the U.S. government designator for the 6SN7. In fact, in many cases, particularly with the earlier tubes, there's no difference between the, um, the consumer version and the mil spec version. In some cases there is, but in the case of the bad boys, there isn't. And I I just read a post recently, somebody was bragging about how they found some 231s and only paid, you know, X hundred dollars for them. And I thought, you paid like twice what the regular bad boy is, and the regular bad boy is expensive, and you're bragging about it, and it's the same too. So don't get caught up in these... Um, you know, in, in, in somebody claiming that they've got the ultimate 6SN7 because it's a VT number. No, it's just, it's just a code that the government was using. Um, the problem with the early GTs is that they're much lower spec across the board. They don't work well in modern equipment. Yes, they sound great, but they tend to get noisy. They get overloaded. And um, 
and and they get damaged. Uh, once once an early GT gets noisy, there's no going back. You can't fix them. So I don't recommend these for anybody except for very early equipment made in the 1940s and 50s and uh, in amps that were specifically designed for them. So we have the universal kit preamp that was specifically designed to play every 6SN7 ever made, including the GT. And I've never had a problem with the GT in, in, the, in, our, in our kit preamp. Okay, so what to do? You love, you love the early sound of the bad boy. It's got a bit of bass forward, amazing clarity in the bass. It's got a lot of air around the recording, around the instruments, around the vocals. It's just a very unique sound. It's not for everybody. Um, well, you could go with a tube that probably the bad boy was designed from, and that is the early Marconi. Now this is the GTB version, but they made a GT version. Marconi, in case you don't know, know was one of the very early inventors of uh, vacuum tubes, radio equipment, telegraphy, you name it. They were involved, if it was electronics, they were involved. And there was a huge plant in Montreal. My father used to walk past it when he was a boy and he said it was four square blocks. Um, there's a picture online, I think, showing the plant. Uh, you should be able to find it quite easily. It was immense. He said it took forever just to get past one side of the plant. Anyways, they made vacuum tubes in huge quantities. And this is one of the, probably the highest production tubes that they made. And they rebranded it for everybody. They made, made these for RCA, for GE, for Westinghouse, you name it, Rogers even. Some of them were sold as Marconi's, but a lot of them ended up rebranded. This is a much more affordable and higher spec version of the bad boy. It has the same air. And, um, and if you don't know what I'm talking about when I say air, I'm talking about um, the sonics around the instruments. It's, it's like there's some extra space. It's really quite interesting. Um, and of course, that's hall acoustics. That's the, the tube, the recording style of the, time, of the day. Rem remember, if you're trying to understand what I'm saying about these sonics, think about a 1950s jazz recording. Those recordings were made with microphones that had tube preamps, with consoles that were tube. Even the reel-to-reel -reel decks had tube preamps, and they would have had these tubes. <laughs> so it's not surprising that the sound of these tubes is the sound of 1950s jazz recordings, because that's, those were the amplifiers that they were using. Right? Um, and these are very affordable. Now, they also have uh, even the GTB has a high rejection rate, very similar to the bad boys, but luckily we have a lot of these. So we can go through hundreds of them and select only the best and do live testing on our preamp and make sure that they're quiet. Um, next up we have the next generation after the bad boy was the Sylvania straight plate. You can tell these because the plates are back to back just like this and it's got a large full chrome dome. I love these tubes. They have a really rich mid-range, which is fantastic for acoustic music, for world jazz, uh, small ensemble, um, you, modern jazz, um, um, traditional country. You get the picture. Anything that's acoustic these things excel at. Anything that's vocal, these things will excel at. They can do everything, but they really do those exceptionally well. After that, and of course, they're the earliest uh, modern type. The GTA and the GTB um, are essentially the same tube. The only difference is the filament specification, and that's just the warm-up time. Later on, when TVs came along, tubes needed to warm up as fast as possible because you couldn't get a TV picture until the picture tube warmed up, the tubes that were in the circuit warmed up. So a lot of things changed when TV came in in the 1950s. Even tube size changed. Tubes had to get smaller because there were so many of them inside a TV console that, um, that they actually physically needed the tubes to get shorter <laughs> and, and tinier. Anyways, um, there's an angle plate version that's more common and a little less expensive. 
There's the very modern GTB. Let's take a quick look at it. This has been rebranded Baldwin. And these are by far the most common. Baldwin, of course, was an organ manufacturer and they needed the best tubes. So this would be an organ grade tube. Uh, so they would be low noise with good matching sections. These are more common, more affordable. Here is the famous Tungsol 6SN7 GTB Tallboy. And this is the opposite of this tube over here. This tube has detail. It's got detail times times a million, times times thousands, times billions, times trillions. <laughs> it's got a lot of detail. Um, but when you have more detail, you'll have less of that, uh, less of the harmonics, less particularly the second harmonics. And that means that you're going to have less warmth in the mid-range. The GTA here, the Sylvania, has an amazing amount of detail. This has more. This has probably one of the nicest mid-ranges of any 6SN7 ever made. This has some of the nicest detail of any 6SN7 ever made. Both of these tubes are getting quite rare. This one extremely so, and they're very expensive. They're hard to find, and to make things worse, they tend to be noisy. So there's a very high rejection rate of the tongue saws. And they're, these are getting close to the point where they're extinct now. That's how rare they are. They just didn't make that many. Sylvania made quite a few of these. And even more of the GTB. Millions of the GTBs. What's next? Well, what in the heck is an RCA clear top 12AU7 with an adapter doing in a lineup? Well, you can't play these, you can't plug this directly in to a 6 volt socket, right? Everybody knows that. But if you happen to have something like our universal preamp with a switchable filament supply, then you could drop this right in and you would have an amazing amount of clarity, a very different sonic um, signature to these tubes, um, even to the tongue saws. With that clarity comes phenomenal detail of really crisp, clean treble that these things are famous for. So I play these fairly often, but you can't, not unless you've got a switchable filament supply. So let's get that off the table so you're not confused. But here is a tube you can. We've been talking about this over the course of the last month. This is an RCA example of the 6GU7. So it's a six volt filament. So if the pins are adapted correctly, and they are, you can just plug this straight into an Octal 6SM socket and it's going to play really well. And this tube has an amazing amount of openness and airiness, very similar to these tubes, and a very clean, clear sound. Low, it's got, it's got low distortion. These are high distortion tubes. All of these are high distortion tubes. The whole 6SN7 family, that is their, that's where that warmth is coming from. Even the tongue saw, which has less warmth than a typical 6SN7, still has a lot of distortion. So it's a very different sound. It's, if you value clarity and an open, clean, clear sound, you're going to love something like the 6GU7. So in this family, you can see that there's flavors for everybody and for you know various types of amps as well. If I was looking at for the ultimate warmth, I would go after the, the Sylvania GTA straight plate. But not everybody can afford the GTA straight plate. So you might want to go and just buy a GTB. The GTBs are more common. They're more affordable. They're a much younger tube. So if you're on a budget, you could buy a used pair of these for a fraction of what the, um, the GTA straight plates cost. And, and sonically, you'll be, you'll be close. You won't be quite there. Generally, my general rule, not only in the 6SN7 family, but in all tube families, is that the earlier types tend to be sonically the superior types. Goodness knows how you could start back in the 1940s and make a progressively worse, 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 worse tube. <laughs> now, I'm not talking about, you know, terrible sounding tubes, but they got slightly less good. <laughs> So, and of course, the early tubes had lower production numbers, 
fewer of them have survived, uh, more of them will turn up noisy in testing, more, many of them won't test good electrically after all these years, and as a result they're very expensive and they're becoming uh, a diminishing supply. And of course they're getting, as time goes on, some of them, like the tongue saw is almost impossible to find. I would call the tongue saw tall boy almost extinct. Those that have wanted them in in their tube inventory have got got pairs of them. I've sold some of my customers. Um, I'm sure have recording studios, uh, and almost all tube sellers will not warranty to uh, studios because commercial duty stuff. You know, they turn the tubes on and they God, they probably don't turn them off. So. Anyways, um, I have some clients that must have commercial studios and they buy a lot of tubes like these um, and they'll just buy pair after pair and they become, of course, some of my best customers, but they're commercial customers, so that makes sense. Okay, so you've selected the tubes that sort of appeal to you, to your listening taste, what you think you might like. What in the heck are you going to do now? Well, you're going to do some critical listening. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that. We've done, we've talked about critical listening before. There's two blab episodes. There's even a score sheet um, in the inf in the store under information downloads. I'm pretty sure there is a listening test score sheet that you can download with some recommended tracks. But you know, feel free to use your own tracks. But you're going to set aside a quiet time when you have a few hours, and you're going to listen critically to the same tracks at the same volume and you're going to keep some notes and hopefully at the end of this you'll actually have identified no actually Jim I I thought I would like a really warm mid-range but I like the air of the Marconi or no I thought I would really love the detail of the tongues and I spent a fortune getting a pair of them but in fact the GU7 does it all for me and it's a fraction of the price um, so everybody's taste is going to be different, but here is the one thing I'll recommend after you've, you've found your tube gear that you really love the sound of tube gear that you're going to keep and you found the tubes for it that you really love, get backups in stock. And I'm not talking about just a pair of tubes, get as many as you can afford in stock because we're entering a period in which it's going to be next to impossible to find some of our favorite earlier types. The more modern types like the GTB Sylvanias will be around for a long time yet. But as we're, as I'm saying, the tongue saw tall boys are becoming extinct. The GTA straight plates, I was lucky. I found um, a whole bunch of them and I still have some left though we're where our inventory is running down and I haven't seen replacements uh, since we were lucky enough to find a whole bunch of these. Okay, now a lot of tubes came in. So let's just clear the decks here. And I'm going to just fill up the table. <laughs> and we're not going to spend too long talking about them because there's a lot of them. And let's start at the front here and work our way back somehow. So here's a really interesting find. These are rare. This is the mil spec. This is a true mil spec tube. It's a unique tube. This is the Jan 6SL7 WGT. And I had one in my inventory, new in the box, and I had one I just found. And take a look at the contract number. The contract number is identical. Isn't that neat? The date packed is, I think, 10 months apart. November 58th to September 59. And, but the tubes are identical. And let's just pop one open. And believe it or not, I have managed to find a matched pair. So that's really unusual for these tubes. Now, this is... This is a very high gain version of the 6SL7. It typically tests 20% higher gain than a normal 6SL7. They're very low noise. They were made for high altitude, high G, 
you know, high vibration application. So it's a very compact uh, um, pair of plate structures that you can see here. They're really easy to identify. And it's a compact overall tube. And um, if you value clarity and low noise, this is going to be a great tube for you. If you like a lot of mid-range warmth, this is not your tube. So a lot of these probably find their way into studio applications um, or into systems in which, you know, everybody has different tastes. We were talking about that just a minute ago. This is really a gorgeous tube. Look at these early boxes. Now, this is the 12SN7 tube. And we have a really popular uh, universal pre kit preamp. It's the most popular kit that we sell, and it can play the six, any 6SN7 and any 12SN7 ever made. Now, why is that important? Well, we were just looking at, we were talking about that, and I don't remember if I mentioned it or not, but these earlier spec, lower spec tubes, you just can't play them in modern equipment. Uh, but the Universal preamp was designed to play these tubes. So let's see if we can get them out of the box. In fact, let's look at the box. The box is neat. So, we got U.S. Army, U.S. Navy, Jan, right? And down here, we've got, um, oh, CRC, that's the code for RCA, Radio Corporation of America. And it was accepted in September of 1944. Neat, eh? Okay, so, these older boxes are a little tricky sometimes to get open, and the cardboard is getting really old, so... I have to be careful here. Have a look at that. This is one of the holy grails of... Let me blow this off. Um, this is one of the holy grails of the 6SN7 um, tube field. It's actually the 12-volt version, of course. But it is the smoke glass RCA silver label tube. And these are highly valued, especially by guitar players because it has it has a kind of um, um, a syrupy sound to it um, that just really with some equipment it just it's, it's just what you want um, I'm not an expert on uh, guitar amp sounds but I do listen to quite a few uh, videos of people who are restoring the equipment and talking about the tubes that go into that equipment because it's a huge for for everybody who sells vintage tubes it's a huge market so it's good that I learned something about the tubes and what people want and what they want are these original early types particularly things like the smoke glass RCAs and um, and these are brand new in the box now you can't unless you rewire um, your equipment app, you can't use the 12 volt tube, of course, but again, you could use this in the universal preamp. And just switch out the switch mode supply. Anyways, I'm just gonna perch that in here so I don't drop it by accident. Well, if you've been following the channel, you know that we're running, uh, for a few days more, we're running a big Mullard sale. And we're gonna, we're gonna, I went through the bin because is we're starting to clear out some space in the bin so I can finally look at all the tubes that are in stock. So we're going to start with something really premium. Here is, look at these. These are all original boxes. There's one that's not a Mullard. It's an RCA. It's the same tube, of course. And here is a lovely high testing set of new old stock, new in the box. These are original boxes. These are not reproductions. Um, watch out. That's if, if I give one warning today that any everybody pays attention to is watch out. There are people now, because tubes have become so expensive and so rare, there are people who are making reproduction boxes and they're not even saying so when they advertise them for sale. And they're doing a pretty good job. But if you look at the box, if you look at any tube with a box that looks too new, I mean, look, at you can see there's some wear on this, right? This one here has got a little bit of staining from all the years in storage. These are obviously original boxes, right? Um, but stay away. Anybody who's putting tubes inside reproduction boxes, stay away. The, I've looked at, and I actually got caught. I bought 
a while ago, a long while ago, when this first practice started, I bought some expensive tubes and they were all garbage. I couldn't believe it. The boxes were beautiful. The reproduction work was amazing, but the tubes tested terribly. They were all, they were tubes I would throw out. I couldn't believe it. Anyways, I took the seller to task and we got our money back, but uh, he didn't see anything wrong with it. And I thought, well, there's something wrong with that. <laughs> okay, these are full price. These are really expensive. This is about as good an EL34 as you'll ever find anywhere. These are gorgeous. Uh, let me put them somewhere safe. Hang on. Now, we're going to talk discount. So, there is a 15% discount on all of the quads and mullards. But, there is also, I cleaned out the bin and there's also a whole bunch of discounted quads that will be eligible for the further 15% discount. So it's not going to get any better than this folks. So why are these tubes being discounted so heavily? They're just on the edge of being perfect. And when I say just on the edge, I mean that their, their emissions are just slightly lower than a perfect uh, quad would be. We're not talking about a lot and they will sound amazing. And you're going to get them with discount applied. You'll get them for half price. So there's actually a new old stock quad that's in the store and a whole bunch of really good used quads. I think I put five in in total. Anyways, you can use the um, discount code on top of buying the uh, what's the product number? It's 301D is what you're looking for. Um, you'll find it. It's the only discounted Mullard quads available. So you can use the uh, Mullard 15 code on the checkout and get a further 15% off. And that'll bring you down to, I think, just slightly below half price. And these, all these t quads, they're going to sound amazing. Of all the tubes I sell and get behind, the ones that I hear back the most from, 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 from buyers are the ones who have bought the Mullards. Even the discount Mullard quads, I'll get notes back saying, Jim, I couldn't believe how good the Mullards sounded. Well, yeah, they're, they're the best EL34s ever made, in my opinion. There's a couple of rarer types that were precursors to the X. These are all XF2s here. There were a couple of earlier types made by Phillips Mullard. Uh, that are just unobtainium. So we just, we're not counting them in there. And we're only talking about tubes that are available <laughs> at any reasonable price. So uh, if you're buying other things though, the regular discounts will apply. There's a hidden code that people have been discovering and using, uh, which is great. Saves everybody some money. It doesn't hurt us that much. Well, okay. I squeak once in a while, but no. <laughs> um, and if you're we got flat rate shipping at $20 around the world. And if your order is $150 or more, you can't see it because it's covered up. But uh, if your order is $150 or more after discount, the shipping's on us. Stay safe, everyone. Have fun. This is Jim. Hoping Charles gets back soon from Vals and More. Signing off. Cheers, everyone.